If you're thinking about using MSI motherboards to do RGB lighting control, stick around. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the hardware uh, connections that you get, and that's going to be pretty representative of most MSI motherboards across the board. I'll give you a good demonstration of the Mystic Light software that you're going to use to control that. Uh, if you're just looking for a quick summary of what my overall opinion of it is, is overall I've had pretty good luck with MSI motherboards over the years. Uh, I don't mind them. I don't have any hesitation to use them. Uh, the software is maybe kind of the weak link with MSI, although it kind of, it works for the most part. And the Mystic Light software is uh, reasonably adequate, albeit simple. You know, I wouldn't have any problems doing some basic RGB control with it. It's not fancy, but it does work. Now, in case you're wondering, uh, open RGB and signal RGB. I've tried both of them with this motherboard. It detected both of these motherboards and the uh, representative ports with no problems. So the RGB ports that you're likely to find on your MSI motherboard are going to be a 12 volt RGB port. Those are titled JRGB. You're also going to find five volt ARGB ports. Now these are called J Rainbow uh, ports in the MSI world. And you may also see a J Corsair port, which is a three pin you know, kind of has that Corsair style connector for running some of the Corsair RGB components. This motherboard we're looking at today is the B550 Gaming Plus motherboard. It has one of the 12 volt ports and two of the five volt ports. So one JRGB port and J Rainbow one and J Rainbow two. In addition to that, most of the gaming motherboards that you find out there will have at least some combination of RGB elements built right into the board in the IO shield area or the PCH area or you know around the edges, things like that. You might find a multitude of various RGB elements across those boards. This uh, B550 Gaming Plus board just has one element and it's on the PCH, which is just a cover. And I think it's got like eight LEDs underneath that. Uh, Mystic Light will control that with no issues. A lot of motherboards I've used in the past, Gigabyte and things like that, I was able to get into the UEFI and control the lighting at least to some degree. Uh, this particular Gaming Plus board has no ability to control RGB lighting from within the UEFI. The only thing it does give you is the ability to turn the uh, mechanism off so that you can turn them off. But this motherboard also has a physical switch right on the board. If you hit that, you can turn the lighting all off. So I want to talk just briefly about how I've got my devices connected up to this motherboard for today's demonstration. Now I've taken each of these two J Rainbow ports and I've connected an RGB hub to each of them. So we should talk about uh, the J Rainbow port, which is just a standard three pin ARGB port, just kicks out that one signal. You can take that signal, you can plug a device into it, an RGB strip, you know, a fan, whatever, and it works fine. It will control that. Uh, you know, up to a certain amount of LEDs and power. There's no ability to hook up multiple devices to this. So in comes the hub. Now these hubs are fairly inexpensive, but it would be important to note that these hubs are basically just repeaters. So these are SATA powered hubs. So it's just gonna take that signal from the motherboard and repeat it out to all eight devices or however many you have connected. So the advantage to that is that you can then send a different lighting sequence to each of the different hubs, one out each different port. You can do that within the software. So you can kind of create some zones and get some different elements going on. It's a kind of a way to break up just having everything do the same thing if you choose to do it that way. All right, so let's go ahead and get Mystic Light installed. And that comes really in two primary versions. Uh, there's a Dragon Center, uh, which is older by the way. It took me a minute to figure that out. And MSI Center is the newer version of that. You can go to your motherboards uh, product page and you can download it through there. So B550 Gaming Plus MSI. So at this page, we'll just come here and we'll click support. And then we can come over here to utility. We're gonna tell I'm still using Windows 10 64 on this build. And you can download MSI Center through here as well. So once that's downloaded, you can just extract it. All right, double click the application and run it. And the application will just be here for you. MSI Center, let's go ahead and load that up now. And there's a pretty big privacy policy that you need to accept. And just accept that if you accept it. Let's go ahead and wait for MSI Center to finish installing. All right, so now you can go ahead and once it's done, you can click Start Now. And it will ask you, you know, to build your own MSI Center. There's other things you can do with MSI Center. It's got some other tools in it, but we're not gonna go into those today. Let's we'll click Gamer. When you select Gamer, it kind of pre-selects the recommended tools installation with Mystic Light being one of them. You know, if I'm just being nitpicky with MSI, it's like devices speed up supercharger. Like 
what do these do? What do they mean? It's like if you're building this tool, put a description in here of what these things do. Sometimes it's so ambiguous that you just have to go Google it and it's like, can you just put it in your stupid front end tool? You know, smart priority, optimize the user experience for creative applications. That's great, it doesn't tell me really anything about what it actually does. That kind of stuff just starts to annoy me a little bit. So anyways, what we're really after in this case is Mystic Light, and you've gotta come in here and check it. So once you get that done, start installation, and then you get a status. So you have to install MSI Center, come in here and select what components you want, and then wait for the rest of these to install. So, all right, so finally, we've got Mystic Light installed. Now we can go ahead and open it from this point. All right, so now Mystic Light is loaded, and this is the front end to it. It's pretty basic in its uh, setup, but let's go ahead and go through it. So now across the top here, you get three different profiles that you can change. I found this to work, yet it was a, maybe a little bit squirrely at times. You know, just click on each tab and configure it how you want, and you can set all of the different lighting elements and components, and it's a quick way to get back to it. So we also do get uh, Mystic Light settings over here, which gives you just some really basic high-level settings that you can set. Uh, third-party RGB, meaning that uh, Mystic Light will overwrite third-party RGB uh, software after a restart. Uh, I have to take that to mean that it will regain control. So if you're using another piece of software out there to control RGB, uh, on a reboot, uh, Mystic Light is going to uh, take control over its hardware back. So you may want to uncheck this if you're, uh, you know, depending on like Signal RGB or Open RGB. Uh, LED power saving mode uh, just means if your monitor goes to sleep, it's going to uh, turn the lights on. So it does have a voice command function, which actually does work. Uh, we'll talk about that more in just a second. We'll come back to that one. For the purposes of this call today, we're going to go to features and mystic light. That's what we're talking about. This section right here, this tab here is going to be all the devices that you have. Check the website for all of the compatible devices so, because some of these are mystic light sync compatible which means that Mystic Light Sync already knows about them and it will pull them in uh, if it detects them. For example, this right here, this AMD SR4 RGB is the AMD Wraith Prism. Uh, that's the CPU heat sink that I have. It's a Cooler Master device and it automatically detected it when I installed it. That's a good thing. That means we can control it right through here. You may have a whole lot of devices out here depending on what you have. And I'll leave links in the description below so you can go check out uh, what products are compatible. Now, I will state at this point that I've got some Corsair Vengeance Pro memory in this system, which supposedly is compatible, but you'll see that it does not show up here. And I've tried a number of different ways to get it working. doesn't matter what I do. I can't get it working. I can't get it going with, you know, if I start up IQ, it works fine. Works good there. Signal RGB works fine with it. Mystic Light does not detect it at all. I've seen a bunch of tricks and tips online on how to get that going. But take it with a grain of salt. You know, if you have some supported products in here, you know, that are of different vendors, you may have to mess around with them to get them to go. Anyway, so the first button here is a sync all, meaning if you click this button and then any lighting effect that you apply should just go to everything. That's great. That's often what we want. We just want the whole thing to sync up. Uh, now, the, this is the motherboard, so this gives me control over the individual zones. So if I click down here into LED, it shows me all the different zones that I have. So I have PCH, uh, JRGB1, which is the 12 volt connector, JRainbow1, which is the first 5 volt connector, JRainbow2, which is the second one, or I can select all. Now, where you would select all here is maybe I don't want to link all my devices, but I do want to link everything on the motherboard. It does have a select all here to kind of get a little more granular with it, which is cool. That works fine. Okay, and then underneath this, once you select what LED zone you want to set, you can tell it what style to do. Now, I'll put at the end of this video or maybe even another video, um, and we'll go through each and every one of these and I'll label them so you can see what they are. We'll do a couple of quick examples in this video, I think, for sure. But you can select what you want. You can just go through and check them all out and see what you like, what you don't like. So we'll just select steady here. That's the most basic one. And then, of course, you get a color selection wheel and you can just select whatever color you want. You can fill out a favorite color list if you'd like to change that up and instead of having to get the exact one. And, of course, you get the RGB values as well. 
that you can edit if you have like a very specific value that you want to set. Uh, you can do that here. And so very simple, pretty intuitive. Uh, you can change the brightness up and down. You can mess around with that. So once you select that light, we can go ahead and apply it. So say in this case, we just want green across all of them. So up on the board here, I've got uh, just a bunch of RGB products just you know kind of stuck up on the board. So basically the section on the right is J Rainbow 2. The section on the left is J Rainbow 1. Uh, I also do have that hub connected to the 12 volt connector, which we'll look at here in just a second. And I do have the Lee and Lee fans here. So what's required to get Lee and Lee to work with this is you will need to uh, obviously have the Lee and Lee controller. Basically, you'll just set up your Lee and Lee fans as normal, hook them to the controller, and then that controller you're going to plug in either directly to the motherboard, which is what its main intent is. That's the way the documentation is going to show it to you. But you can just plug it into the RGB hub, and then open L Connect 3, come in here and put it into a motherboard lighting sync mode, and then you're ready to go. Now it just takes its signal directly from uh, Mystic Light. So in this case, when I select all, now everything on the board is green because that's what I've set. I've selected my motherboard. I've selected all my lighting zones here. And I've got the LED style is steady. I've set it to green and then hit apply. And everything is green. Even the PCH on the motherboard is green at this point. Now, obviously, we can change that. We can just come up here, we can put red, and we can apply that, and it should change everything on the board to red. Okay, so obviously, in Mystic Light, we don't have to select all. We can select just an individual component. We can go J Rainbow 1, uh, which on the board here are the lights on the left. And let's go ahead and apply a setting to that. Let's do Color Ring. And, of course, uh, we get a couple of different options, and those options are going to vary depending on what... Uh, lighting style you set. So in this case we get light speed, meaning it's kind of an animation. Uh, light speed is exactly that, how fast you want the animation to go. Uh, we can do a brightness and cycle can be like the time in between uh, how often it goes. So we can raise and lower this and kind of you know make it faster, make it slower as to how often it triggers. So we'll leave it at 100 here, but you can change it. Uh, I found messing around with this, you just kind of have to change it into something that you like. So that will go ahead and just apply to J Rainbow 1, which are the lights on the left. Now let's change this to uh, 10. And you'll notice that in between firings, there's a delay. And that's what the cycle is controlling. So let's put 10 in there. So now it should cycle off uh, way quicker in between. There's just way less dead time. But it's kind of cool that you can adjust that just depending on what you want. And of course we can change the light speed and the brightness. We'll just put a full tilt. So anyways, you get the main idea here. There's just, you know, there's some settings. I wish you could maybe mess around with the colors in some of these, but you can't. Uh, anyways, but you can just keep selecting whatever you want. Now we can go to J Rainbow 2 and we can apply a different effect to here, which would be one of the cool things about using a couple of RGB hubs in that you could do that. Or just, you know, if you have two single devices that are plugged in directly, or say just the Lee and Lee fans, you don't necessarily need the hub. The Lee and Lee controller can go directly to J Rainbow 1. You could have another uh, controller on J Rainbow 2, and you can kind of do the same thing. There's a number of ways that you could break this up. And so, but we'll apply something different to this. So now you can see that each uh, zone is getting its own uh, lighting sequence, so on and so forth. You can do the same thing with the PCH. You can apply a zone to that. And JRGB1, you could apply a, you know, a lighting style to that as well if you wanted. Um, or you can select all. It's really up to you how you do it. But that's the basic layout here. So one thing I will point out about this CPU heatsink is it does actually have several different LED zones. It's got the logo, the outer rings, and the fan. And if you use the you know, AMD software, which is really Cooler Master software that comes with this, you can control all of those individually and you get you know, a whole bunch of different things. I think even uh, Signal RGB detects all of these different zones for it. Uh, but Mystic Light does not. So there's just nothing you can change here on the LED. It's just like you change it as a whole. But right now I've got it steady on red and you don't get very many options with this particular one. So we can color cycle, we can apply it. And we'll change the light speed of it. It seems like it's it's rather slow going through there. But there you can see, you do get the color cycle. Uh, you can select breathing, which you know we've all seen. There you go. You do get a couple of different things and steady and off. 
So although it's cool that it shows up here, I think that's a, you know, a nice touch that it's here, but it's a little limited in to what I know can be done with it. And it would be nice if they were able to implement all of the features. Anyways, I can control that separately. I can control the motherboard separately, all the different zones. This really is the more powerful function of this, depending on what kind of RGB components you're gonna use. Or I can just hit the sync and you'll notice this little icon above the motherboard and the heat sink here, that little link icon changes. So if, if I select here, you know, it like breaks the chain, which means they're not all linked together. And if it's linked, I can do that. And I could uncheck if there's like only certain things I want linked together, then I can, you know, I can uncheck and check that link as, as I see fit. So you can kind of change up what's linked and what's not linked using this little uh, icon up above here. Fairly basic, fairly simple, but if you link them all, it may limit what you can select because uh, not all devices are maybe going to be able to do all things. So uh, I would expect this list here to change. Obviously, when you link everything, you don't get an LED uh, list anymore because it's everything. It just tries to apply it to everything. So we'll go steady and we'll change that color to, let's change it to blue. And since we're linked, everything should then turn blue, uh, even on the motherboard. And you can see the little PCH over here. It's kind of maybe hard to see on the camera, but you can see the lights in there. That is the PCH on this motherboard. And the other thing we can change that I'm going to change real quick just to demonstrate this is I'll go to my motherboard. I'm going to select JRGB1. Now my hub back there, the little switch, it's this easy DIY hub. There are others out there that do this, but there's a little selector switch on it that you can select it from five volt to 12 volt. So right now it's getting its signal from the five volt line, but I can, I can switch that to get its uh, input signal from the 12 volt line. All right, so now I've got the 12 volt signal selected, meaning that it's just gonna take uh, the reading from the 12 volt and it does convert it out to a five volt signal. So I can select JRGB1 to uh, change this port, and I do get all of these different LED styles. One thing you'll notice though, like, like if we do rainbow, for example, now we're all familiar with what rainbow should look like on ARGB. It has a whole bunch of colors all at once. 12 volt uh, RGB lighting does not do that. It cannot display more than one color at a time on the whole sequence. So you can see here, it is cycling through colors, but it's, it's not able to do more than one color at a time. All right, so I wanna go back and show you the voice selection real quick. I'm always a little wary of this kind of you know gimmicky type stuff, but this actually did work okay. And once you enable this, what I did notice though is that the profiles are then blanked out because it's expecting that you're gonna use your voice to control it. So come into the settings, turn it on, and then hit the question mark here. And it gives you some ideas as to how to control it. It's kind of funny because it's it you know because it's uh, its attention uh, statement is hey lucky, uh, hey lucky. So you'll see it blink when it kind of recognizes your voice. Hey lucky, Mystic Light Rainbow. Hey lucky, Mystic Light Green. See right there, it just keeps the rainbow setting. Hey Lucky, Mystic Light Turn Green. Hey Lucky, Mystic Light Steady. Okay. Hey Lucky, Mystic Light Red. Okay. All right, so there you have it, the voice functions. It works, it's not perfect. So let's talk about some of the other features and functions that are out there. I'll start with Ambient Link. Now, Ambient Link is a function that should take your RGB lighting and like project it onto Nanoleaf devices and Philips Hue devices and kind of uh, choreograph and sync that to uh, certain games. Now, I wanna talk about that because I'm not gonna go over that in this video and I'll tell you why, is when I initially, uh, when I initially purchased this board, I like to go through the user manual, download it and kind of look and see what ports I get, what functions it has. It shows ambient link on this B550 uh, Gaming Plus board. It's in the extra functions there. When I first got Mystic Light loaded, I noticed that the ambient link option was not there. Now I had to go do a little bit of research on this and what I found, I found MSI's like official supported devices list 
for ambient link. And B550 boards are on there, but only if they have built-in Wi-Fi. Now this Gaming Plus does not have built-in Wi-Fi. So therefore, it appears to me that the ambient link option is never gonna show up. User manual says it'll do it, but MSI says it won't. So they need to get that rectified or reconciled, whatever you wanna call it. Now overall, this function seems like it's fairly limited to me. There's some conflicting information online from MSI in the sense that it seems like, uh, in one sense, that Ambient Link only works when the game is playing. So only when it's playing will you get anything, you know, passed over to your Nano Leaf or Philips Hue. But there is a, an FAQ on their website that asks if there's any other way to control Nano Leaf lights. And it looks like maybe through the Ambient Link options that there are some other, you know, some of these options that we've been looking at will apply to those lights. Again, I'm not able to get to it on this motherboard to test it and look at it. I do have the Nano Leaf lights over here, so I was kind of looking forward to messing around with it. So one of the other functions I tried to play around with briefly was a mobile app. Uh, on the Apple Play Store and on Google Play, uh, there were several applications for Mystic Light. I tried to download a couple of them. None of them ever worked for me. They never did sync up. Uh, I really don't see any mention in the documentation or on you know, MSI's website regarding this mobile app. And it looks to me from looking at the reviews and some of the dates on them, that this application is actually quite a number of years old. So I, I really didn't find either way and I didn't spend hours researching it, uh, but it doesn't really seem like it's a workable app or supported and I don't really know what it would do for you, but I never did get it working. It, it, it would load okay, but it never would detect, uh, you know, this much. Anyways, I would just recommend skipping the mobile app. If you've used it and it works for you, let me know in the comments below. So I mentioned it earlier, but in case anybody is wondering, yes, Signal RGB and Open RGB do detect uh, the MSI motherboards. Uh, I would assume that any of them that have the RGB components in it, uh, Signal RGB is gonna work with. Uh, don't quote me on that. I can't guarantee you that every single motherboard out there will work. Uh, but at least this particular one did, and I would imagine any of the modern ones uh, are going to work just fine. So one other subject I wanna mention real quick is on the firmware update part of your motherboard, at least on the B550 Gaming Plus, there was an LED firmware update there. Now, it, again, in MSI fashion, it was not clear at all what it was for. And looking at the documentation for it, it really went out of its way to kind of tell you don't update this if everything's working properly. And it required you shutting down, disconnecting everything, turning off the switch, updating the firmware. And, you know, and because they're saying don't do it if there's no problems, I just chose not to mess with it. But be aware that if that's out there and everything otherwise is working all right, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it. So there's a quick overview of how Mystic Light works, kind of the hardware side, the software side, and some of the features and functions uh, surrounding that. Overall, my opinions uh, of MSI, they're positive from a hardware standpoint. You know, the, at least most of the hardware I've ever worked with has been, you know, pretty robust. It's functional. I haven't had any major issues with it. And this motherboard's really been no different. I don't have any complaints about it. Uh, you know, the software, you know, my biggest issue with it is it's just not really clear from MSI a lot of times what either something does, whether it's supported, you know, there's just enough ambiguity around the software side that it can just frustrate you. So as far as the RGB software goes, Mystic Light, uh, albeit it's really basic and it's relatively easy to get installed. I wish there was a standalone version of it and you didn't have to put MSI Center on with all the other junk, but uh, you know, whether any of that other stuff is useful to you or not, you'll have to decide. But nonetheless, uh, for what it is, it works pretty good. I was able to get all of this RGB lighting working with it. Uh, you know, the software is basic. You don't get individual LED control. You can't really control individual fans and things like that. You know, the, if, if you want that level of control, you know, you need to move up into like Corsair and things like that, uh, which comes at a cost and a premium. Uh, the biggest advantage to this is if you've already got an MSI board, you already have all this capability you don't need the extra controllers and all that kind of stuff. You, maybe you wanna use a hub, connect in a bunch of different RGB components to expand that one port, but you know the software is there, you install it, and you can at least get some basic RGB lighting going, and Mystic Light works well enough for that function. And I think there is a pretty wide range of products that are Mystic Light Sync compatible, meaning they'll show up in that little tab there, 
and they will work natively with the software. So there's probably a million different ways to get you know, some cool looks out of this. You'll have to get creative with it. But overall, uh, fairly pleased with it, albeit uh, it's just simplistic. But So if you want to expand your world a little bit, take a look at Signal RGB or Open RGB. Uh, those work fine with this as well. Ambient Link, uh, again, it's a no-show on this motherboard, unfortunately, even though it kind of said that it was. Somebody let me know in the comments below if you've had a different experience with this Gaming Plus motherboard. Or if you've used Ambient Link, let us know what your opinion of that is. Again, I might do a follow-up video to this and show that. But anyways, uh, if you've already got the board, go have some fun. That's the biggest thing is as long as you're having fun with it, then all is well, right? And so anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this particular motherboard, Mystic Light in general, I'm happy to play around with those things and answer those questions uh, the best I can and when I can. And that is going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.